Hey guys, so today we're going to do a stack problem and we're going to implement a stack and this stack is going to have the normal push and pop functionality. But in addition to that, we're going to implement a max function, which is going to return the largest element in the stack. And this is all going to have to be done in constant time. So we'll have to think about how we can do that. But without further ado, let's get started. So first of all, we probably should ask a couple questions of our interviewers. Like, for example, what sort of data are we actually storing in this stack? Because it could be that they want us to implement a generic, like in Java, you could do it with generics, or you could do integers or strings or anything else. And depending on what you do, then you may have to define a max function. Like if you had strings, how are you going to decide what the maximum string is? So this is something that we need to clarify. And for simplicity's sake, in this problem, we're just going to say that it's an integer. Uh, so that'll make it easy to tell what the max value is. And it's, we're not going to have to worry about lots of weird details with different data types or generics or whatever. So that'll make it simpler. And another question that we should ask, and this may seem like a strange question to ask, but we should confirm with our interviewer that they actually want, when they say stack, they want it to mean, or that they mean a last in and first out data structure. Because you could implement, there are cases where you could implement a stack that would use like FIFO or something else. And we just want to make sure that we're on the same page with our interviewer. So that would be a good thing to verify with our interviewer just to make sure. So now that we, have clarified with our interviewer what we're doing, let's think about how we're going to design this stack. So first of all, whenever I think stack, I think of a linked list because it's really easy to do the last in first out sort of thing. So if we imagine with our stack, we can do a, we're going to have a push and we're going to have a pop. And then so for our push, let's say we push one, then we just add one to our linked list. And then if we want to push another number, we just add that to the front of the linked list and then link that to the previously existing linked list. So say we push two, we just add two to the beginning there. And we already have a reference to the beginning of the linked list, so it's really easy. And we want to push another number, we can just push three like that. And so it's really simple to do that. And then when we want to do our pop, it's the same thing, basically, because we have, you know, like this same linked list like this and then all we have to do is take the first element and then we get the next the one that that points to and that becomes the first element so we can easily just remove that and so that's fine that'll be pretty easy and that obviously runs in constant time like we are required to do in this problem so that's fine but now what we need to do is we need to think about how we're going to implement this max function and so what I'm thinking is that the easiest way would be to just write a function that would scan through the list every time that we call it. But obviously that runs in linear time, not constant time, so that's not a good option. So we have to think about how else we could do this. So for our max, what we could do is we could just store what the maximum value is in the list. So for example, let's say we push one, then we're going to say that max equals one, like this. And then we can, if we push another number, like we push two, now we say, whenever we push a number, is that number greater than the current max? And if it is, then we increment or we add, we create, we reset the max to be the new max value. And so that works, that works while we're pushing. And that's a good way to do it because we'll be able to get the max value in constant time. But this doesn't work when we're popping, right? Because let's say I'm here now, and let's say I have uh, my linked list has a three here, or let's say that I have three, two, one like this. Now my max value is three, but let's say that I pop three. Now, when I look at this, it's easy to see that two is the max, but how would I actually know that in my code? I don't, I'm not keeping track of what the max value is. So we have to think of an alternative. And one good way that we could do this is actually to add an additional field to the nodes of our linked list. 
So what we could do is say, okay, now we're gonna, so we have our linked list like this, and the max is two, and now we're gonna add three, and three is greater than two, so we're gonna set the max, but before we delete that node entirely, we're gonna say, okay, what was the max before I pushed this node? before I push this node. So three is going to have another reference. Let me try and represent this. And that's gonna to be to two. So we're gonna make the max three, but now when we pop three off, we know that the next node is two. And then two, in the same way that two is gonna have this reference to one. And then finally, one is gonna have a reference to null and then we're, we expect that right because it's the list is empty at that point so that makes sense and if we continue to push more values so let's say this is going to get kind of messy let me just i'm going to delete these but remember that they're there so let's say we push more values that are not bigger so let's say we push two and we push one like this so now our max value is still three and we can just say, so we look here and this is going to not point to anything. This is just going to be null and this is, this can be null as well. And now when we get to three, that one points to two, right? So what we can say is whenever we pop the value, we're just going to check and see if this like pointer to a max value is set or not. And if it's set, then we know that this is that we're popping the max value, so we need to set the new max value to be this new, uh, this like new node that we have saved. And if not, if it's null, then we don't have to do anything. So hopefully that makes sense. And now we're just going to go ahead and try and code this up. So we're going to let me move some of this up. I don't want to run out of space but we're gonna create a class. I'm gonna call it max stack, but you really just wanna come up with a name that's fairly descriptive and that is not crazy. Cause you want to, with your variable naming and your class naming, you just wanna show that you're going to write legible code really. So they don't want to think that you're gonna be someone who's gonna name all your variables like x1, x2, x3, x4. So you want to give something, you want to give things at least a mildly descriptive name. If, except, you know, sometimes if the case is, if it's a very small program, using a variable name like X is fine. But once you get to lots of variables, you want to be more cognizant of how you're naming your variables. So anyway, we're going to create a private inner class called node. You know, it's, we're basically creating a standard linked list in Java, and then we're going to do, uh, remember we talked to our interviewer and this is going to be a stack of integers, so we're just going to do an int value, and we need a private int next. And now we also need a pointer to the previous maximum value, right? So I'm going to call that private, sorry, this should be a node here. I'm going to call this node old max. And so, you know, reasonably good description in the context of this code of what that value is. And then, so we have our node and now I need to store, I need a var variable to store the stack itself. So private node stack. And I also want a variable to store the current max. So private node max. And we're gonna, we need a constructor, but there's not really anything that we need in this constructor, right? Because we're just, uh, you know, we don't have to initialize any of the variables because we're just going to do a lazy instantiation where we're gonna initialize the stack the first time someone actually calls push. So we don't really need to worry about initializing anything right now. So I'm just going to leave that empty. And then I'm going to create my first is going to be push. And that's going to be void push. And we'll take in an integer x. 
So like this would be a case where it's you know fine to use a one letter variable name. And so we're gonna create a node for x. So node n equals new node. And we're gonna set go ahead and set the value. So n dot value equals x. And now we need to check, we're doing this, as I mentioned earlier, this lazy instantiation. So we need to check whether our stack already exists or not. So if stack equals null, then we want to say that stack is just going to be equal to n, right? Because we're, we're just adding the first node to our stack. And otherwise, we're going to do this. We're going to... add it to the front of our list, right? So we're going to say that uh, n.next is going to equal stack. And stack equals n. So that was pretty simple, right? We just added a pointer to the previous stack from our n node, and then we made our n node the first node of the stack. And now we need to check we need to update the max value if necessary, right? So we're going to say if max equals null or n dot value is greater than max dot value. So here we're saying if if the max value is null, then we need to set it regardless. And if the max value if the value of the current node is greater than the max value, then we want to set the max value. So we're going to say n dot old max equals max. So we're setting the old maximum pointer from our new node to be the old max. And we can do this regardless of whether the, the old max is null or not, because we want it to be null if it's the end of the list anyway. So we're not going to do any check for that. And then we have to do max equals n, right? So that's going to be it for our push. And let me, I'm going to scroll up here a little bit so that it's easier to read. And now we're going to go ahead and implement our pop function. So public step, not static, public int pop. And then what we need to, we need to think about here, and we should check with our interviewer what they want us to do. but what happens if someone calls pop on the stack and the stack is empty? Because that wouldn't really make very much sense, but it could happen. So in this case, you could, for example, return not a number, or you could return, if you used a integer object, you could return null. But in this case, we're using a primitive, so you can't do that. But what I think makes most sense is to just throw an exception, because it I can just throw a null pointer exception because it really doesn't make sense that they would be calling this if the if they haven't added added anything to the list to the stack, and a null pointer exception is appropriate in this case because it's a null pointer, right? So I'm just gonna say if stack equals null, throw new. Right, so that'll just be a decent and fairly clean way to handle that. And now we're popping, so we want to get the first node of the stack. So node n equals stack, which is our first node. And then now we need to remove it from the stack. So we're going to set stack is now going to be equal to n dot next. And finally, we want to see if we need to update the maximum. So we're going to say that if n, well, we could say if n dot old max is not equal to null, right? Because we are setting it null if it's not a maximum. So it's fairly easy to do it this way. If n dot old max is not equal to null, then we just say that max equals n dot old max. And finally, we need to return the value. So we're going to return n.value. And now we're on to the last part. So we're almost there. Public int max. So this is our 
fancy new part of our stack. And this is going to be really easy, right? Because we already have it stored in a private variable. So we don't really need to do any computation whatsoever. So all we need to do is just say, again, we probably actually need, we do need to check if max is null, right? Because if the, again, like if the list is empty, it does or the stack is empty, it doesn't make sense to call max. So we're going to do the same, let's imagine we'll just do the same thing as we did above. So if max equals null, then we're going to throw a new null pointer exception. And otherwise, we're going to just return max.value, right? So very simple. And that's it basically. So as we always do, we need to go back and test our code. And this is going to be a little bit trickier to test because of the fact that it's not actually, you know, it requires a client to execute properly. But we're just going to go through, we'll just go through each of the methods and make sure that they do what they're supposed to do. So let's say, let me delete a little more stuff here. So let's say that we'll test push first. So if push is null, so we'll just, or if stack is null, then we're going to come and we're going to, uh, sorry about that. <laughs> we're going to go to the, create a new node. We're going to, let's say that we push um, one, for example. So we're going to X is one. We're going to push, we're going to create a new node, set the value is equal to X. And now stack equals null. So we're going to say stack is going to be equal to this new node n with value x. So we now have a node. So n is going to be equal to node. I mean, you know, this is all very pseudo codey, but node one, right? So now we're going to come down and we're going to say if max is equal to null or n dot value is greater than n dot max and it's greater than max dot value and max is null. So we're going to say n dot old max is going to be equal to max. So n dot old max is now equal to null. So, well, actually, sorry, old max is equal to null. So n dot old max is going to be equal to null and then max is going to be equal to n. So we now have max equals n and then now our stack looks like well, max equals one and our stack looks like one as well or one null. So let's go ahead and push another value. So let's push two. So push two. And so we're going to come down here in X is equal to two. We create a new node with value two. We're going to, uh, so if stack is null, stack is not null this time. So we're going to come down here and we're going to say n dot next equals stack. So we're going to have this node two, and that's going the next one for that is going to be equal to the stack. And now stack equals n. So this is what we get here. And now we're going to say if max equals null or n dot value is greater than max dot value. So in this case, n dot value is two and max dot value is one. So it is greater. So we're going to say n dot old max equals max. So we're going to go ahead here and we're going to say that to like, so the max here is going to be equal to one. And I guess I could go ahead and for visual sake, we'll go ahead and put that this is null. And so we're going to say n dot old max equals max. And then max is going to be equal to n. So now max equals n, which is two. And now let's just do one more run through to make sure that this is all working the way we expect. And I'm going to get rid of these just so they're out of the way. But remember, they're there. We're going to push one again. So let's push one. And we're going to put one. We're going to say int x equals one. Create a new node. Value is one. Stack equals stack does not equal null. So we're going to say n dot next equals stack. So we end up with this same as before and now we're going to come down and now max does not equal null and n dot value is not greater than max dot value so we're just going to skip that so the 
next value here is just going to be, or the old max value here is just going to be null. So now let's take this and I'm going to go ahead and actually put these back because we do want them for the next step. And this is going to be null. That's it. So I'm going to go, I'm going to copy this down below so that it's easier for us to read. But now we're just going to do the pop function here. So you can see we're going to pop the first value. So if stack is equal to null and it's not, so we're not going to throw an exception. So now n is going to be equal to, so n equals one, node one, right? And now stack equals n dot next. So stack is now going to be equal to this two here, like so. And now, uh, so that's fine. And we have stored our node here. And then the, um, what was it, old max equals null. So now if old max is not equal to null, we have to change the max. But in this case, we don't have to do anything. So we're going to just return end up value. So we're going to return one. And that's what we expect. And now let's just do one more to test the changing of the old max. So we're going to remove this. And so we're going to remove, so it's not null. N is going to be equal to the first node. So N is equal to two and old max is one, right? So we'll just delete this as best we can. And now we're going to come down and so we just did this step here and now old max is not null so max is going to be equal to n dot old max so max is now equal to one or this node here so that's what we expect and now we're going to return two and finally let's just double check that our max function returns correctly so it's just going to return the value of the max uh, node that we're storing and we already basically saw that that's going to maintain the right value so that's pretty much all there is and the only thing left that we need to do is we need to make sure that we mat that we got this correct that it runs in o of one time or constant time for all of these three functions so for our push function, we can see that we're just creating a single node and we're adding it to the front of the list. So that should only take one time or a constant time. And for our pop, it's the same. We're just removing a node from the front of the list. So in both cases, we don't have to scan through the list at all. We just remove the front of the list. So it's super easy. And then finally, for our max, it's trivial because we're just returning a value that we already have stored. So that also runs in constant time. So that's basically all there is to this problem. It's a little bit tricky, but once you get it, hopefully it makes sense. And this is a good problem and it's a pretty common problem that you might see in an interview. So hopefully that was helpful to you and I'll see you again soon.